Howdy folks, Jake here with Banjo Ben again, and for this week's tech tip, we're going to show you how to swap out the tuning machines on your banjo. Um, what we have, we've started carrying these uh, Cyclone tuners, which are a 10 to 1 ratio, and that is very cool. And I'll explain what that means here in a minute, and these are just really high quality uh, machines. Um, this particular customer wanted uh, the boxwood installed, so that's what we're doing on this one, which they have a real neat look. That's actually boxwood buttons on there, which is really cool. And I've already, the reason there's just a couple left, I've already installed three of them. I'm just gonna show you how to do the other two because four of them are the same process. So um, first, let me explain to you how these work. Um, if you can get a shot, Adam, of the side of the banjo here, Let's tap that. Actually, let's go down lower. Sorry, folks. I'm trying to get the light where you can see. Is that any better, maybe? Okay, so on a standard tuner, if you watch as I turn it, watch how the post moves. The post almost turns, pretty much it does turn as much as the button turns. Now if we go over to these, you'll see that as I turn the button, it takes many, many, many more turns. 10 to one, actually, <laughs> to get it, the post all the way around. What that gives you is a much more precise, so if you just wanna move the note a little bit, you can turn the button quite a bit more just to barely move it. It gives you much more precise tuning. On this side, if I just want to turn it a little bit, then if I want to move the note a little bit, you know, even just the slightest movement jumps that post quite a bit. See? So they're just a more accurate machine. Plus, in comparing this to the factory tuners on this old Gibson, these are about 300 million times smoother. Uh, they're just basically perfection. They don't have any of the grit or anything that these have. So let's talk about how to install them. It's a fairly simple process. If you have a, a, a standard Gibson style banjo, something that's already got planetary pegs. And what I mean by planetary pegs are the inline uh, with the, you know, the, the gear boxes in line with the button and the post. Um, there are older friction style tuners that that's wouldn't qualify as, as planetary. And then there are what you call guitar style tuners, which, you know, have the post and the cog and worm gear with the, the button that comes off to the side to turn. Uh, if you have either the friction or the guitar style tuners, it could not always, but it could require a little additional work to make the tuner hole size in the peg head, uh, the correct size. The, the hole should be a three eighths inch. So if you're wondering about it and you just want to know if your banjo will accept them, if it's got the planetary pegs already like these, good chance it'll work. Almost positive that it would. But if you want to be 100% sure, just take off one of your existing tuners, measure the hole on the inside, and if it has a 3 8 inch hole, you should be in good shape. And I'll measure that again to be sure. I'm, I'm kind of doing that from memory. But anyway, all you're going to need to do this part of it, you're just going to need a wrench that will fit this nut. And I believe that's also a 3 8 Is that right? 10 millimeter. It's a 10 on the Gibson? Well, no, the, the old one is 3 Yeah, eights. yeah, so the old one's 3 8 Right. I got my buddy Adam helping me out here. Everybody say hi to Adam. <laughs> so we just take our 3 8 there, work that around, loosen it up. There we go. And then once it gets loose, you can just take it apart by hand. And the old tuner will just fall right out once you get once you get it unscrewed. There you go. Then you take your washer. So you see how those work? You just got a washer and then uh, kind of that barrel nut that goes down into the tuning post. Now, an interesting thing to note about the way these banjo tuners work is that, let's see, turn it here. Okay, you see right there, it's got a little spike. And that's uh, kind of an indexing point. Um, that will actually 
that will actually sink into the wood on the back of the peg head and it will keep the the uh, machine from turning so it keeps that tuner anchored the new one the new one will have it too you see here there it is see it so if if your uh, banjo has that already you want to make sure that uh, well, you don't have to. It's just a little better to do it this way. We want to make sure that this will basically sink back into the same hole of the old one. Uh, just, I don't know, if you're picky about stuff like that, it just means there are going to be less little tiny holes in the back of your peg head. Uh, you could completely turn it the other way, and as you tighten it, it'll sink it into the wood anywhere, really. So uh, when function is more important than form, I guess it ultimately doesn't matter. But... So what that looks like, let me flip this over here. So right there at the top, you can see the old index hole of the old tuner. So what I want to do is take the nut and the washer off the new one, which I'm doing right now. There we go. And then I want to take the the new spike part and I want to line it up with the old hole like that and then seat it in. Now we'll come back around to the front. Hold on just a second here. There we go. Kind of holding it in place there. Don't let it move. We'll come back around to the front and we put our washer on and then we work our nut down in there. And we just go to tightening it up. Just get it hand tight first. Bear with me, folks. It's kind of hard to do stretching off camera. I almost have to be one of them there contortionists to bend my body over here. <laughs> and then we'll take, uh, I believe Adam said it was a 10 millimeter on the new tuners. Is that right? Yeah. Where's that at? Do I have one of those? That bigger one there. The end of the box thing. This one? Yeah. Okay. And if you don't have the exact size wrenches, you can use something like this. Just a little open-ended wrench. My dad carried one of those in his pocket his whole life. I've seen him fix everything from a a toilet to completely rebuilding a Harley Davidson on the side of the road with one of those. So, and just while we hold it in place, we're just gonna tighten this down until it snugs up. We don't want it super tight. You just want to make sure the back of the tuner is seated good, which feels about right now. Let's see. Yeah, so we got all the all four of the backs seated. Sorry, we're having problems with the light here, folks. There we go. Okay. There we go. So that's all there is to that. You just, it's as easy as unbolting one, bolting the new one in most of the time. Like I said, if you have, uh, and I forgot to measure, didn't I? If you have one that's uh, a smaller diameter hole, and these won't fit. Like I said, I think 3 8 is a standard hole through the headstock. If it's smaller than that, uh, you just simply need to drill that out a little bigger. So let's move on now to the fifth string peg. Now the thing with the fifth string peg, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> this is a, oh man, this is a, a really, Kind of a hick video, mess with my light kit and everything right in the middle of it. I apologize about that, folks. So if we get to the uh, fifth string peg, if you want to change it, you don't have to. Uh, but these sets that we sell, if you want to show them these sets, they come with them. And they're, it's really cool. They come in all different types. So we've got like ebony uh, button options with the nickel plating. Good looking rigs. Uh, we've got the gold plating with the ivoroid. We've got the nickel plating with the ivoroid buttons, the ivory. And then, uh, like I said, these are the boxwood that we're using here. It's kind of a cool looking one. So, uh, it comes with uh, the fifth string peg too, the sets that we sell. And so to make them all match, we're going to go ahead and change this one out. Most fifth string, well, not most, all fifth string pegs on a, a modern Gibson style banjo 
are going to be a tapered fit. You see this? So they're they're splined. There we go. They're splined and tapered. And you will also on these have an index point. You'll have one spline that sticks up right there. See it? Not all of them have it. So I've actually uh, the ones if I remember right on the standard Gibsons don't have it. Uh, but a lot of these aftermarket ones these days they'll have that index spline that sticks out a little farther. So I'll show you what to do with that in a second. So that being the case, since it's a tapered fit, um, it's as simple as pulling the tuner out. And it's kind of funny. Some people have their fifth string tuner, you know, if they're not paying attention, if they're restringing it or whatever, they'll be pulling on it. And over time, it'll work itself loose and fall out. <laughs> and so usually you just push them right back into their snug. Sometimes you need to make some little shims out of some little pieces of wood stock or I've even seen people use toothpicks. I've even seen people glue these in with wood glue. I don't recommend doing that if you don't have to um, because it makes it harder to get out. So let's talk about removing it. Most of the time, you're going to be able to just grab these firmly and pull them right out, just like that. Sometimes it may require you and if it requires any more pressure than than by your hands, I recommend taking the button off. Otherwise, you could crack it with what you what you might do. Um, if it does require more pressure than that, you can throw a rag over it. Get you um, a pair of pliers very gently. Get a hold of it and kind of try to work it out. And uh, if if that doesn't work, if it's glued in, um, you know, if you've tried everything and it just isn't come out coming out, there's a chance it might be glued in there. You have to take the button and all the plastic and everything off and then get you a like a soldering iron gun um, and you know get it hot and then just work around on the metal and you want to be careful not to get it too hot or this finish will blister. You just got to kind of be careful uh, and, and feel around as you're doing it. Get it just hot enough where that heat's going to transfer and get that glue joint soft enough where you can work it out. Uh, but that's a topic for another video, really. Um, I can't really show you much more on that unless I had one that was causing those issues, and then, then we could talk about it. So, um, as you see with this Gibson, it did not have an index spline. It's pretty well uniform all the way around. So, what's a good idea to do? Uh, the way this was set in there, I should mention that, uh, let's get down level here. Uh, these will set with a slight cant. There we go. These will set with a slight cant forward. So in other words, most of the time they're not going to be uh, straight up and down like that. They'll be just slightly leaning like so as far as, you know, that post. Be about like that. So, uh, what we want to do is mark the new one where it looks about like the old one. Just pay attention to the one you took out before you do it and uh, make sure it's going to be about the way you want. So, that's about the same cant angle that we had. And this isn't, I mean, you, can, you can't really mess this up. You can go pretty far with it or you can almost go straight up and down if you really wanted to and it would still function okay. This is just kind of what's considered standard. So once we got that marked, and I'm going to push in on it gently, like so, and uh, see where that index has made its little mark there. You can see where that index spine has, has poked into the wood a little. Then I'm going to take a flat file, a sharp little flat file, and right there where that was, I'm just going to work a little material very carefully. Cutting a little channel into the that way this uh, index has some place to go like so there we go all right good and then we just push it in and it's as uh, it's as good as done at that point push it in until it's tight you know make sure everything's functions it does nothing's rotating out of place so Anyway, I uh, hope that makes sense, and I hope that helps y'all, and uh, I apologize for the uh, uh, makeshift camera work that I'm doing here, but uh, doing the best we can for you, and hopefully you can see enough to 
have confidence that this is a pretty easy job if you decide you want to do it yourself. And definitely check out these Cyclone style tuners, the 10 to 1s. Uh, I've been installing and changing tuners for a long time and I'm as impressed with these as I, probably more so impressed with these than I ever have been a set of tuners. And I know a lot of pros are using them. Uh, lots of pros, they're, they're all going to these. So anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to give us a shout. And like always, we appreciate you all for watching.